Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, black holes, dinosaurs are cute, and sloths get unlucky. Again. Starting off the news this week, the collaborative team operating some of the most advanced and sensitive gravitational wave detection equipment across Europe and America have revealed that they've detected the biggest black hole merger yet. The first detection was made by the same team in just 2015, and the event they described this week while being recently detected actually happened 7 billion years ago, over half the age of the universe. Some have commented that this event could suggest that the largest black holes in the universe have been formed from many mergers before it, getting bigger and bigger until they formed the colossal giants they are now. Up next is a very cool paper reporting a fascinating bit of prehistoric behaviour. A tibia from a Miocene-aged mylodontid ground sloth is described and found to preserve 46 tooth marks inflicted by a young or sub-adult Purusaurus the giant caiman that was the top predator of the ancient wetland systems of Proto-Amazonia. This caiman appears to have grabbed the lower hind limb of the sloth and may have attempted to dismember it, showing a very useful and unique view into the feeding habits of young Purusaurus, which seem to have targeted capybara-sized terrestrial animals before they reached their giant, full-grown dimensions. And now over to Ben with the astronomy news. Thanks, Doug. Also published this week is an incredibly remarkable paper which describes the first known three-dimensionally preserved embryonic skull of a sauropod dinosaur, and it's pretty adorable. Embryonic sauropod skulls have been found before, however this new specimen, which comes from somewhere in Argentina, the exact location is unknown as it had been illegally exported, differs in parts of its anatomy. The skull shows that stereoscopic vision was developing early, and it even preserves a premaxillary horn. It's a very significant specimen that allows paleontologists all sorts of new understandings into the development of sauropod embryos, so this is some fantastic news. And lastly for this week is some more Spinosaurus news. This time it comes in the form of a newly described locality in Morocco which is part of the Kemkem group and exposes some different sequences of rock, and also has several vertebrate bearing horizons which include some Spinosaurus material. The upper two of these sites, which represent aquatic environments, are dominated by the dental remains of Onchopristus sawfish as well as Spinosaurus, whereas at both sites terrestrial dinosaur remains are very rare. So this is interpreted as being more evidence for Spinosaurus being highly aquatic, as the very high abundance of its remains compared to terrestrial animals indicates that it was spending a lot of its time in the water, shedding its teeth here where they were then preserved as fossils. So some very exciting paleontology news this week. Back to Doug in the studio. Oh, how's the Spitfire documentary doing? All right, thanks. Anyway, that's it for seven days of science this week. I do hope you enjoyed it, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>